In this example, we're going to begin looking at functions that make multiple recursive calls, the most classic of which is the recursively computing the Fibonacci numbers. So we have the classic implementation here. And for this implementation, what we do is we have two base cases. Either we return zero when n is zero, or we return one when n is one. So those both, both those base cases appear up here. We then make two recursive calls, one with size n minus one and one with size n minus two. We then return their sum. So the Fibonacci numbers, just a reminder, are zero, one, and then you add up the previous two to get the next. So then one, then two, then three, then five, then eight, then 13, and you can go on forever. So those are the Fibonacci numbers. It's a classic way to compute them. So looking at the costs of the various things involved, t of n is equal to constant runtime. Everything there is just an if statement or addition other than the recursions, plus two recursive calls, one of size n minus one, and one of size n minus two. And if we're looking at the worst case runtime, we'd want to take the worst of the options for the if statement there. So t of zero is equal to c. Now, let us try and analyze this. This is an example of an algorithm that we will see we only really need to bound it up below for some maybe not so obvious reasons. So what I'm going to do is give this a lower bound. And I'm going to do that by making the larger of the recursive calls smaller. So t of n is greater than or equal to c plus between a recursive call of size n minus 1 and a recursive call of size n minus 2, the recursive call with size n minus 1 has a larger input and therefore is the larger of the two between at the n minus 1 and the n minus 2. So I'm trying to make this smaller. I want to replace the larger one, t of n minus 1, with the smaller one, t of n minus 2. So I'm going to replace t of n minus 1 with t of n minus 2. So t of n is greater than or equal to c plus two copies of t of n minus 2. Now let's just do our substitutions. So t of n is greater than or equal to c plus 2 times c plus 2 t of n minus 2 minus 2, which is n minus 4 t of n is greater than or equal to, let's distribute and group together terms. I have c plus 2c plus 2 squared t of n minus 2, uh, minus 4, t of n minus 4. Let's do another substitution. t of n is greater than or equal to c plus 2c plus 2 squared times, make a substitution, 2, or sorry, c plus 2, t of n minus 6, t of n greater than or equal to, c plus 2c plus 2 squared c plus 2 cubed, t of n minus 6. Looking at those first couple of terms, those are, those are adding up powers of 2 but they're always one less than the power of two appearing on the t. So this is interpolating that pattern. We have c plus two c plus two squared c plus all the way up till two to the k minus one times c plus two to the k t of n minus two cubed and n minus six, two squared and n minus four, and two and n minus two. That looks like this is two times k. Now, let us try and use our base case. So we want n minus two times k to equal our base case of zero. So k equals n over two. Let's use that information t of n greater than or equal to c plus 2c plus 2 squared plus all the way up till 2 to the n over 2 minus 1 c plus 2 to the n over 2 times c. I am then going to do something kind of funky here while doing my lower bounding. 
t of n greater than or equal to c times 2 to the n over 2. I'm going to drop every single term except the last. Why is that? Well, let's look at what we know. We have a constant times 2 to the n over 2, which if you want, you could write that as c times radical 2 to the n. Therefore, we know t of n is in big omega of the square root of 2 to the n. That means that we are bounded below by an exponential function. People often take for granted how quickly exponential functions grow. Even for inputs of size 100, something like this can take longer than the universe has existed. So, to bound it below by this, we know it grows at least as fast as an exponential function. This already means that this algorithm is hopeless to use in practice. This is an exponential lower bound. If you can ever get an exponential lower bound, then you are sufficient for claiming that this algorithm is bad enough that we don't want to use it. For all of our purposes, I will tell you that if we get an exponential lower bound, you are done with your analysis. In fact, if we go back up, we could have, and we will do this for problems in the future, we will drop everything except for the terms required to get an exponential lower bound. We actually could have eliminated everything except for the two recursive calls. Those two chip and conquer style recursive calls are enough to cause this exponential lower bound to occur.